But before we actually get into today's video, I do want to give a special shout out to everyone right over here. Shout out to everyone over here for purchasing merch to support this channel. Not only are they being shouted out for contributing to the channel, but they're also entered for the Milwaukee giveaway, the retrofit giveaway, and a couple other things that were given away this month. And not to mention, their names are going to be featured on the E91 M3 plaque once the build is complete. So if you guys want to be a part of this build to support this channel at the same time and enter a giveaway, make sure to check out the first link down below. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Turbo Back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be trying to get the E91 M3 in this garage so we can finally start assembling all the electrical and mechanical things to get that bad boy driving. Guys, for the first time in six months, we finally have the wagon in the garage, and I'm not gonna lie, we're pretty much super close to getting this thing to run and drive. I just wanna get all the electrical components to work so we can actually close the trunk and actually get everything working properly. Um, so right now we removed, uh, this is the supercharged uh, DME. We're gonna go ahead and put back the stock DME, stock everything else, and again, start on the wiring, start on the coating, making sure the door's locked, making sure everything works properly. So that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. If there's a lot of little things that we're knocking out, that's because we kinda have to do that stuff to be able to have a fully functioning car end of the day and that's the priority i mean all this type of stuff is the hardest things gonna be knocking out in the couple, next couple of days uh, but without further ado let's just go ahead and start installing the computers and getting the electrical things to work asap That's perfect. Oh, I did it right. That's perfect. I didn't know. I didn't know if I put the uh, chip on the cluster wrong or not. Oh, really? I, I was like, wait, did I put it on backwards? And I was like, oh shit. Bro, it looks so good. We have an M3 cluster in here, guys. <laughs> So we got power to the car, our cluster's working, but unfortunately our keys are not. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out the factory E91 harness and figure out if we're missing any modules or something that we really need. Why you keep going to my garage, man? Ah, don't bite me. So while Nick's actually getting the harness fully separated so we can get the wires we need to actually get it retrofitted into the wagon, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually start pulling off the stuff that has to do with the keyless entry system because this wagon originally had keyless entry with the original harness, but the M3 harness did not have keyless entry. So the goal is, is to get keyless entry in this wagon and retain that feature because keyless entry is amazing and uh, it's definitely gonna make the car feel a lot newer. So let's go ahead, put all the brackets, keyless entry stuff together, and then uh, start on the wiring. <laughs> So just to give you guys an idea of what I'm doing right now, I'm reinstalling this bracket because it has the keyless entry back here, has one of the modules, it looks something like this, very much gets mounted right back there. So that is the first location. The second location is right over here. Um, there's a bracket, we have it mounted right over there. Our third location is over here in the front. Well, technically that's the fourth location. Over here in the front, I went ahead and just slid it underneath this little pocket there. And then the fourth one's actually gonna be sitting right over here. I don't actually have the proper bracket for that. It's supposed to sit in the back of this uh, center console piece. I'll probably pick that up from pick and pull, not a big deal. But in the meantime, we could plug it up, shove it up behind there, not a big deal. But we will probably will hear a little bit of rattling until we actually have the proper bracket for it. And Nick, um, what are you doing exactly, bro? So we rewired the MOS bus for the Evo because we don't need any of the external modules. And right now, these are the sedan uh, antenna cables, which are too short for the wagon. So I'm splicing the entire back of the factory harness so we can uh, wire in the donor 
or not the donor, but the original wagon antennas into the into the car. So what I told Nick honestly to do is just leave these wires off to the side or we'll just zip tie it or whatever. He said, no, we're gonna do this properly. And we actually got the OEM BMW tape and uh, we're actually cutting the entire wiring harness, removing all the wires we don't need. And we're actually installing all the wires we do need um, because Nick is a perfectionist, but I appreciate you, my G. <laughs> It'll make our lives easier in the long run. In the long run, as of right now, it does look like a lot of work, but uh, Nick's killing it. Nick's gonna go ahead and keep working on that for me. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start separating some more of these wires so when we do end up needing it, it'll be easier to access. So the next harness Nick went ahead and started working on, this is actually the PDC harness and he went ahead and just taped it up real quick to make it look, you know, how the OEM is supposed to look. And then uh, I think at this point to actually get the rear PDC retrofitted, um, because again, the, the M3 did not have rear PDC, the OEM wagon did. Um, so we pulled out the harness from that and we are just wiring it in right now. And look at that, it's gonna fit like OEM, it's gonna look super good. And I think it only ha requires two pins, right? To get PDC in. Your PDC module has two connectors like this. So the one connector is all your sensors. And since it's only running from there down here, I was easily able to just cut cut it out of the harness. And then this will just bolt up. And then this is your two wires for your uh, comfort axis antenna on the rear bumper. And then that will be pinned into back into another connector that I need to remove from the harness. But this is super easy. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, whatever Nick just said, I'm sure that's what most <laughs> of us thought. But yeah, basically getting a PDC retrofit doesn't look as bad. I honestly thought the harness wires go all the way to the front. So thankfully, it pretty much just connects to the back. So we're going to go ahead and just retrofit that. I'm also going to go ahead and put a bandage on because I cut myself real bad. But um, anywho, yeah, so not only are we retrofitting Kilo Sentry, we're also retrofitting rear PDC sensors. So uh, it's going to be pretty dope. <laughs> So now that you pretty much routed the PDC sensors, you guys saw one of the connectors were white and the other one, we're gonna go ahead and pin it into the black one. And then we're actually gonna put in the PDC module, guys. And bada bing, bada bang, we got sensors. Come on, Nick's over there working on the PDC retrofit. I'm over here trying to install this front carpet. I'm like, why isn't it sitting right? And then, uh, yeah, Nick pretty much told me, he's like, isn't there pretty much a transmission tunnel difference on this side? And uh, yeah, this carpet isn't really fitting. Now I can either go back to the original gray carpet or I can go ahead and just remove some of that foam in the back to make it fit better. So I think that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just remove the foam. I know on this side, it's the exact same thing because uh, we didn't have to do any transmission tunnel modifications for the all-wheel drive system uh the driver's side is a little bit different so let's go ahead and just pretty much modify that a little bit so we can at least get that carpet to sit properly so as far as how the carpet's sitting it's sitting pretty well just over here the only way for it to sit perfectly is actually when the seat is in the car once the seat's actually in the car it's actually going to bring it this way and that's honestly perfectly fine then the center console is going to hold it in place then all the other dash trays and stuff like that's going to hold it in place so i'm not really too worried anymore at least now it doesn't have any more buckles and stuff like that so that carpet's going to go in perfectly now as of right now we haven't had breakfast or lunch it is 1 p.m so we're about to head out and uh, what do you think? Some Chipotle or you want burgers or what are you thinking? I want the full Norwich Chipotle. The order. full Norwich Chipotle experience. <laughs> Let's take the I3 guys and go get that. So Nick decided to go with the exact same order I went with. So <laughs> I guess he'll let you know what it tastes like in a little bit. All right, bro. How did you, how was the Norwich Chipotle bowl? I'm stuffed. That was was it good though? Like, it I, get, I get brown good. rice. You like it? It was real good, but that's like the most calories you can get out of Chipotle <laughs> in one sitting. And guys, after a good meal at Chipotle, hopefully you're not feeling too sleepy. <laughs> I'm ready for my nap. <laughs> We have so much more work to do guys. So we're gonna go ahead and keep cracking at this and honestly keep trying to retrofit more wiring. Now in terms of the trunk wiring, uh, there's a lot to get done. Just mainly because the way uh, they cut this when we actually bought this LCI trunk is very stupid. So we're gonna have to strip this all down and uh, figure out if, w what each wire does and what module they need to go to. Um, and uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and tackle that another, probably the same video, but tomorrow possibly. For the sake of today, we wanna to get pretty much all of this stuff sorted. If we can actually get all the wiring in the trunk and all this looking super clean, um, and just pretty much the, the wires that actually go to the tailgate ready to actually get you know wired in and everything, that would be ideal. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get all that stuff done today. We will try our best. Um, when I mean we, I mean Nick. Uh, <laughs> as far as for me, I'm actually gonna start assembling more of the dash stuff together, um, just so when we're actually ready to, you know, start testing things, um, we'll actually have access to everything and, you know, flip the keys and, you know, power button and all that good stuff.
And guys, about hours later and one sun later, pretty much uh, we got all the wiring put off to the side. We did pretty much take all the wiring that we ended up needing. Uh, these are some dedicated, uh, these are dedicated like wagon wiring. So we're definitely gonna need to do those wiring, hopefully, uh, possibly tomorrow. We'll actually show you guys the whole thing uh, tomorrow on that. We have some speaker wires over here. We have a few other wires for some other things, again, like keyless entry and stuff like that. I believe these are the keyless entry wires right over here. Nick already kind of started on that. But what he's actually helping me do right now is actually deleting the things over here. The Bluetooth module, and what was the other one? Uh, it was like a USB module and a Bluetooth module. So we don't need that. We wanted to go ahead and just clean up all the wiring here. We went ahead and removed all the wires we didn't need it. Got that all rewrapped. About to put the plastic bracket. It's going to look a lot better. And then Nick right now, he's actually removing the wires that go to the rear deck on an E90, which is this. This is the harness that came off an E90 M3. You have a rear deck that has two speakers back here on the M3. And you actually don't actually have speakers to the doors. So unless you actually have like a Logic 7 or a uh, Harman Kardon sound system, this one was a base model high uh, so the wiring from the factory E90M3 doesn't actually have any wiring that actually goes to the doors, which isn't an issue primarily because uh, the doors actually on the E91M3 have already a wiring for the speakers. Um, so we just need to get wiring that actually goes from the chassis to this door, which Nick is doing right now. He's pretty much just rerouting it to both doors. So, so we will have all four doors um, connected and we can actually hear audio through all four of these doors. You guys know we got the Alpha One sound system and I am super stoked to get that installed. We were only able to install the two front speakers because uh, yeah, yeah, the, the rear doors don't have any power to them, don't have any connections to them. So that's what Nick's doing right now. Get a huge special shout out to Nick. Stuff like this, honestly, I don't know if I'll be able to do without him. So uh, I appreciate you, my G. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're gonna be able to get done as much of this today and then tomorrow. Again, we're gonna try to see what we can do. And uh, I'm just hoping we get at least all the wiring done in these next two days. It's a, it's a lot of work. And when I say it's a lot of work, because that, that, this guy's doing all of it. <laughs> I'm treating him well, guys. <laughs> What's up guys? This is actually the next day. I'm still here with Nick and we got a lot of wiring to still do to this car. So just to show you guys the progress we made, which is pretty good progress, but uh, considering that Nick's only here for one more day, we're gonna have to get through a lot of things just to be able to finish this car up in terms of the wiring. I really hope we can actually get this stuff done. I might have to give him a lot of uh, coffee to get him to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how things go by. But yeah, Nick went ahead and helped us out with all the wiring to the front of the car there. As you guys can see, we have a bunch of wires over there. That's for the keyless entry uh, that we need to actually get into the fuse box. So unfortunately, to actually get to the fuse box and properly do everything, uh, we were going to have to remove the dashboard once again. Um, because I didn't cut any corners before, I don't want to cut any corners now. So we're going to go ahead and remove the dashboard. As far as the wiring goes over here, um, we got the module mounted up. We have the wiring to the sunroof right over here. And we got it all routed to this section. Now, it is a mess over here because we need to go ahead and route all the wires where they need to go. But as far as the trunk area, we did wire in all the things that make this thing a wagon. We have the cigarette lighter for the wagon right over here. We have these pieces for the side trim piece for the wagon as well. We have the module up there that is also for the wagon that wires up into the trunk over here. And as far as these trunk wires right now, that is actually what Nick's gonna be working on right now. Nick's actually trying to pull up the factory harness out of here and then actually splice it and figure out what wires work for both cars and which ones are wagon specific so we can figure out how to get power to all those and just get everything to work properly. So yeah, there's a lot going on, uh, but also I just remembered one other thing we did, uh, the rear doors, we actually got speakers wired into both of the rear doors. So now unlike the original E90 M3 harness, the E91 harness now officially has speakers to the rear doors. So technically we could put the full sound system in the car once we actually get rear door cards that have the speaker cutouts. A lot of things going on, a little messy, not gonna lie. Freddy is back once again for the second day. This dude's always coming by whenever I open up the garage. <laughs> cute little guy. Uh, but anywho, while Nick works on the wiring over there, what I need to do is actually strip these two doors down and remove this dashboard. I need to remove this dashboard again so we can access the fuse box. And I need to strip down these two doors to actually put keyless entry wiring harnesses in the door so we can actually install keyless entry uh, door handles. Without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get this dash out, unfortunately.
All right, guys, so I just got the factory harness out of the passenger door. We're gonna try to get the keyless entry in that door so we can actually test the keyless entry once it's all put together. What Nick's doing right now is that we actually stripped this tailgate. We stripped another tailgate, the original one that came on this car, and uh, we got a lot of splicing to do. <laughs> So he's gonna go ahead and merge two harnesses. Uh, this is the M3 harness and then also the, the wagon harness. And then you gotta add a couple more wires, right? To make sure everything works. Yeah, about five or six, but uh, got a big job in front of me. <laughs> so I'm gonna let Nick get to that. I'm gonna go ahead and get the keyless entry, retro, uh, not the keyless entry retrofit, the keyless entry door and uh, go ahead and put it in that door so we can go ahead and test everything when the time comes. I'm gonna go ahead and strip this door. That's honestly gonna be very boring. So I'm gonna show you guys what Nick is doing, which is honestly the main thing that makes this a Dana wagon. It's also equally as boring. Yes, if yes. not more. <laughs> yes, yes. And right after about a good meal at Habit, we are back working on the E91. So the harness is pretty much off of the ground. We pretty much think we have everything we need to get this whole trunk back together. So at this point, um, he's almost done pretty much wiring up all the wires. And then we're gonna go ahead and route it into the trunk. Again, doing all the testing in a little bit. We're just gonna get everything routed and then we're gonna go ahead and tape it to the front, pin everything to the fuse box, pin everything where it needs to be. And uh, honestly, guys, this might take a very long time. And I mean a very long time in like three to four hours. It was like little wiring stuff. So we'll come back to you guys and we actually, uh, you know, make seemable progress. So about a few hours later, guys, <laughs> I lied. We did have to pull out the harness one more time. I think now, I think we're good. Um, in terms of the trunk, as you guys can see, there's no more loose wires. All these wires you guys are seeing right here is because of equipment. There's literally no more wires over here. We have the beautiful battery sitting over here. We have everything right out like OEM, which is looking really nice. And we're able to keep all the wagon features. Like for example, this is the cigarette lighter. We have also uh, the light for the trunk. And this is also for the retract for the trunk these are wagon pieces and then nick actually got the entire harness wired in uh for the trunk so literally once we actually get all the wires to the front of the car and pinned in and everything everything should work on this trunk i mean this is all theoretical we're hoping everything goes according to plan um but nick's got a lot on his uh, hands tonight <laughs> literally yeah so nick's been doing the wiring while i've been doing all the cleaning up work and just making things look like oem but yeah as you guys can see that just looks super 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 good we're still not done over here we're definitely gonna be wrapping things up around there as well uh what's it called oh man this is uh but well, this is looking pretty good like what do you think bro what do you think so far right now from this point back if you were a technician a dealership and ripped all this out you couldn't tell that entire sections of harness were spliced in and modified for the uh, m3 wagon so i'm really proud of yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie guys. Nick's attention to detail is just it's insane guys. Uh this wire you see dangling is for the curtain airbag. So I'm actually gonna start working on getting all the brackets up there and just getting both curtain bags up there. And uh Nick's just gonna continue all the wiring from again this point forward and just getting everything situated. So we'll come back to you guys hopefully uh in the next few hours with a lot more done. We're at day three of working on the E91 M3, and uh, let's just say this wiring is taking way longer than expected, but um, we're almost there, we're almost there. Once we actually get a few more wires dialed in, I mean, technically we have all the wires sorted, but after trying to put back the fuse box, we're noticing that a couple of the wires are kind of being stretched out, and we don't want any of that happening, or any of them snapping, or putting any strain on those wires. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and drop that fuse box and extend those wires, just make sure everything else is perfect, cleaned up, and then we can tape up everything and make it look OEM. And then once we actually get all that stuff done, uh, we're gonna put in the dash and do all the other testing as well. 
which that is the exciting part. But in the meantime, I was thinking of leaving everything stripped and then basically getting the car ready for paint in possibly a month or two. But I was like, you know what? Let me just fully assemble the car and actually start driving this thing because we want to test everything, make sure everything's running properly um, before we actually do a full paint job. And then we actually have some major issues and it needs to be at a mechanic shop or whatever the situation is. Um, so long story short, let's go ahead and fully assemble our M3. And after a little bit of finicking, guys, this door is officially a keyless entry door. We have all the other keyless modules hooked up. We have this one hooked up right over here, which is going to be installed once we actually install the center console. We have the one right up over there, the one right over here, and the last one right back here on the rear crash bar. So that being said, once we actually get all the fuses in there, because we did have to pretty much add a lot of the wagon stuff into the fuse box and tap it all in. Once we actually get all the fuses there to work, um, we're going to start giving this bad boy power and hopefully fully assembling the dashboard. I'm actually not going to conclude it at that. We have actually something else we're going to be installing. And I think I'm going to do it in this video. And let's just say it's going to really modernize this E chassis, make it feel more like an F and a G chassis. This is going to be so sick. I'm super excited. And this kit is not something you guys see normally because there's only like one in a handful of these in the world. So actually installing this is going to make this thing even more rare and even more of a one in one E91, which I'm super stuck. Again, I'm not going to tell you guys what it is just yet. Once you get all the fuses in there, I'll let you guys know. Right, guys, so we're opening up the garage right now. I'm about to grab the fire extinguisher. <laughs> we did everything by the books. I mean, literally, Nick had diagrams he was pulling up to make sure everything was gravy in the Navy. So, I mean, everything should be like OEM, like 100%. Honestly, this is not a job that most people would do. A lot of people would just route wires and throw wires around. But I do think this is one of the most perfect jobs we can do. How many hours are we in this? 30? I think we're in like 30 hours 30 straight. 30 hours. Guys, in three days, 30 hours. Like, you guys don't, you guys can't imagine the amount of work that went down behind the scenes. I mean, the video might make it look short. It may make it look like we didn't do much work, but oh my God, bro, it's been pretty insane. So as of right now, Nick's gonna go ahead and reconnect the battery. We're gonna try to see if our MBT Evo kit and everything over here powers on. Um, obviously we have no engine fluids and stuff like that, so we're not gonna start up the car, but if everything over here lights up, we can go ahead and start assembling everything. We can go ahead and run the codes and flash the car, do everything we need to do, which is some pretty exciting stuff. You guys can even see um, how it's gonna look with the carbon trim. Guys, this is gonna be one heck of a build. All right, when Nick connected the battery, I did, I did hear some relays. Do we have a start button and a key? We do have a start button and a key. So we got the keys, the brand new keys right over here. And then uh, let's get that start button. Moment of truth, test, push button, start, These our keys right over here. We're gonna put the car on a trickle, guys, and we're gonna head inside. Again, moment of truth, I just cannot wait to see that MBT Evo. When I say I cannot wait, it's because it's the same technology you would see in a Toyota Super 2021, but we're gonna have it in a 2007 E91 M3. How sick is that? You guys can hear all the doors locking and unlocking. <laughs> So the keys is finally being recognized. I think it's because the whole keyless entry system is already hooked up. Uh, actually, should we test out the keyless entry system? So our spare handle is right over there. So we just need to plug that into the driver's side and we will know if our keyless entry, because if one keyless entry module is not working, the whole thing is pretty much deactivated, at least from my personal experience. So about to find out. All right guys, so the keyless entry didn't work just yet. And I think it's also because the passenger door harness is not even there, possibly, possibly. The keyless entry system, everything needs to be working properly for everything to work. So we're going to deal with that later but i don't know if you guys can hear the sounds that are coming through this car we're actually getting power proper power oh my god bro <laughs> what bro what bro guys check that out that is the mbt evo we've been talking about look at that bro did you see the boot up straight it was like the m logo did it's you do that the, yeah it's the m3 uh oh my god bro that looks so sick dude <laughs> Guys, this is basically the exact same system I would see in my 2021 Toyota Super. So that is just crazy. Well, no longer mine. It's my wife's car. But I mean, same, same, you know, same thing. All right, guys. So we're gonna finally test power to the actual hatchback. Now, unfortunately, I didn't realize that the the, the wagons actually have different tail lights. So I ordered a full set of LCI E91s. We need to get pre-LCI. We're getting some power in the rear right there, which is looking really good. These ones, I don't think we have to worry too much about it because this is the factory M3 harness. Uh, so those should work. But the problem is, can these work because these are the ones we ended up having to rewire completely everything in this trunk we had to wire completely and uh we almost lost the tail light <laughs> oh that's looking so good oh my god guys i cannot express to you guys with the amount of money we've been putting into this build how good it feels to see this progress look at that mvt evo that looks crazy oh my god oh my god that's crazy all right guys moment of truth did the wiring on this section right here work please please we need to see some power 
Yes, dude. <laughs> That's one down. Oh, that looks so good. And bro, the genius in action. All right, I'm about to see right here. So turn signal is working on the outers. I think that's all there is. Both sides are working just fine. We can't, oh, you can put it in reverse technically, right? Yeah. Yeah, put it in reverse real quick. You see our reverse lights maybe. Okay, so reverse lights. Oh, okay, so one reverse light's working. One is not. One's not. Could be the bulb though. Could be the bulb. So let's go ahead and swap out those bulbs real quick, guys. And find out. That looks like it it's working. So we got power this right there. Flickering a little bit. Ooh, our hatch is closed. Hold on, before you close that, <laughs> make sure the button works. Ah, okay. Well, it could be. That needs to be connected. Yeah. All right, try that. Go ahead and click it in. Okay, so we still need to figure out how to get power to this guy. So actually get that to unlock. Uh, and then, but this one right here looks like it's working, which is great. So yeah, so a few things we do need to figure out. Oh, oh, these old yeah. M3 modules. So it doesn't recognize that at all. Yeah, we need to get the laptop. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and just code the car first, guys, before I get too excited. Oh my God, I'm just too excited. And then uh, we'll go ahead and test out everything again. But so far, a lot of things are working, uh, but that's all trial and error. Hopefully we can get this stuff sorted uh, pretty quick here. Another thing I just remembered, guys, uh, so the tail lights could also need to be coded because they're LCIs. So we're gonna get all that stuff coded, all the hatchback features, we need to get that stuff coded as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug in the dome light and get that stuff coded. And then hopefully our whole panoramic roof is working. So for those of you guys who don't know, a sunroof on an E91 is different in terms of the wiring. So you don't actually have just one motor up here. You have one motor over here, one motor back here, and then you each have a module. While other sunroofs on E90s, you just have a motor right over here. So you can just pretty much plug it in and then it'll just turn on just fine. But in this case, there's actually a harness that goes from this motor to the rear motor, and then it goes into a module. So we pretty much had to go wiring to a module. So you probably have to get that module coded. But long story short, once it's coded, Will it work? That's the question. So yeah guys, we're at the end of the video. The good news is we got power to the sunroof and we can get both of the pieces to actually come up. But unfortunately the rest position, uh, I don't know what's going on there. So I do need to figure out if there's a way to fix this. If any of you guys know any professional sunroof repair people, let me know because I really do not want to order a new sunroof. A new sunroof is about $2,000 and I cannot find a single person selling a used sunroof anywhere. And we already got this sunroof redone in El Cantaro. So it just really hurts to see that our sunroof unfortunately is having issues. But you guys saw the amount of progress that went down on this car and it's been absolutely insane. Shout out to Nick for coming down here and helping me out with this build. This has been an absolute crazy adventure with him. And honestly, we made so much progress onto this car and I'm so stoked because guys, I'm hoping by the next video, we should be able to actually drive this car out of the garage and drive it, which would be absolutely insane. Obviously, there's so much of things to make this thing legal. We have a lot more things to do, but if we can at least get it running and driving, it'd be pretty practical, it'd be pretty amazing, I'm not gonna lie. Don't forget to enter the giveaway, guys. It'll be shout out in the next video. It's gonna be that first link down below, but without further ado, that's gonna have to conclude this video. I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.